Welcome back. You're still watching Network Africa on Channels Television. Now, unfortunately, the challenge of illegal migration remains up, or is, it still remains a threat, and up to 40 African migrants are believed to have drowned after their inflatable boats sank near the Libyan coast. The information was given by survivors who told the ordeal to the United Nations Refugee Agency after reaching Italy. All the deceased came from sub-Saharan countries such as Senegal, Mali and Bene. Italy has become one of the main entry points in Europe for my immigrants seeking a better life with more than 85,000 migrants, mostly from Africa and the Middle East, reaching the country so far this year via the Mediterranean. Now, there's, the issue of illegal migration has been a very big one as the numbers have soared in the year 2015. Now, based on the information we have, our Network Africa team has discovered that this latest one, which occurred yesterday, led to the possible deaths of 35 to 40 people. Three days before that, 150 to 200 migrants adrift in the East Mediterranean of Greece and two ships helped to salvage that situation. They were threatened by the situation there. Now, on the 28th of June, 700 migrants were rescued in the Mediterranean Sea in Libya. On the 6th of June, ships rushed to rescue thousands of stranded migrants Mediterranean, in the Mediterranean Sea. And on the 22nd of May, Myanmar rescued two migrant boats at Bangladesh border in Rakhine. On May the 17th, 100 migrants killed in the fight for food lost their lives in Langsa. On the 5th of May, dozens died as migrant boats sank in the Mediterranean. On the 3rd of May, nearly 3,700 migrants were rescued off Libya. On the 19th of April, an estimated 700 people were feared to have lost their lives after a crammed fishing boat capsized in Libyan waters, and only 28 people survived. Preceding that was the events which occurred on the 16th of April. 41 people drowned trying to reach Italy by boat from Libya. On the 13th of April, hundreds drowned after a packed migrant boat capsized. On the 12th, 400 migrants drowned after their vessel capsized off the Libyan coast, where rescuers managed to save 145 passengers. On the 5th of April, Italian naval and coast guard ships rescued around 1,500 migrants aboard five boats. On the 4th of March, 10 migrants drowned in the Mediterranean, but thousands were saved. And on the 11th of February, more than 330 died after being ordered by traffickers to embark from Libya on overcrowded rubber dinghies in atrocious weather. All those are truly disturbing numbers, but we cross over now to East Africa. The wait is over and the results are out. President Pierre Nkurunziza of Burundi has won the presidential elections. He won by 69.41 votes. We just received that news right before I came into studio. We're going to go live right now to Bujumbura, where Mr. Jean Regis Ndwimana is standing by for the latest. Mr. Ndwimana, thank you very much for your time. Tell us more about the results. Yeah, and percent, and the second was uh, the main opposition figure with uh, 18 uh, percent. And uh, the surprise is the participation, the percentage of participation is more than 73 percent. So everyone knows now the winner, and everyone knows now who's going to be the next opposition figure uh, to be uh, the opposition of the uh, Rosiza regime, the third time. What do you think happens next? We're likely not going to see any possibility of a unity government, are we? Yeah, yeah, we are, that's the, the, the most issue because is Guasa going to say yes to the government, uh, unity government or traditional government? Is he going to send his MPs on the parliament? This is the next issue on the table now because you remember, uh, Guasa has been one of the opponents against the third term. So is he now going to say yes? This is the, the, the main discussion on the table right now. The, um, the, there is some, we can't really celebrate here because we're seeing that 
the European Union, for instance, is getting ready to sanction some individuals who have contributed to the crisis. Are we looking at the possibility of even more sanctions from more bodies like the United Nations with this result? You know, this issue is more diplomatic and more political than being So this is, uh, uh, as long as there's such more violences, maybe there's going to be talks between the government and the Western country, but all our Western country, Western country is going, going to be firm against this. This is another question. So. Thank you very much for giving us the latest. We will definitely be reaching out to you very soon. Thank you very much. Mr. Jean Regis and Dewey Manor reporting from the Burundian capital, Bujumbura. Now, also concerning the consequences of President Nkurunziza's decision to run for a third term, more than 150,000 people have fled Burundi in recent weeks, and many are staying just over the border in Rwanda. Presently, more than 14,000 refugees are living in Bugesera refugee camp, one of the biggest camps in Rwanda. The conditions are anything but favorable, but many of the refugees have no plans to go home anytime soon. Bugesera is now the second largest refugee camp for Burundian refugees in Rwanda. In the run-up to the elections, they were receiving hundreds daily, but since Tuesday's polls, arrivals have been dwindling. Officials don't believe that is by choice. According to what they are saying, the borders are closed. So many of the militia are watching and uh, they are forcing people to stay in the country. Uh, the situation is uh, under control. We have uh, shelters, we have food, we are feeding them, we have enough water, we have uh, sanitation, we have uh, a clinic when someone is uh, sick, we have possibility to treat him.